This is Hideto Kazutsumi, Japan's most dangerous stalker. Not even the government could stop this man as he was plagued by an obsessive and jealous personality. Hideto was simply incapable of forgetting the love of his life, Rie Miyoshi. After Rie broke up with him because of his toxic behavior, the stalking began. Then it quickly escalated into threats until he was finally locked up. However, being thrown away in prison just enraged him more and as soon as he was released, Hideto began plotting his revenge. If he couldn't have Rie, no one could. Nothing was gonna stop him from doing what he did next, not even the police. In fact, they unintentionally helped him with his murder. This is the disturbing case of the Zushi Stalker. Our story begins in Tokyo, Japan during the year 2004. This is where Rie and Hideto first met. Rie was only 25 years old at the time and worked as a freelance designer slash writer. She was known as a cheerful person filled with positivity, living a healthy lifestyle and always on the quest for self-improvement in both physical and mental growth. People like Rie have a tendency to attract all sorts of people including those of which who have a deep negative energy within them. Because after all, those individuals are desperately attracted to the light. And Hideto was that person. On the exterior, he seemed like a great man. He was 32 years old at the time and worked as a social science teacher at an all-girls private high school, very beloved by his students. Growing up, he was the youngest son of a wealthy family pretty much spoiled his entire life and didn't have to endure much hardships. Which meant, one of his major flaws was that he got bored of things extremely quickly. He was never attached to anything and couldn't even keep a job for more than a couple of months at a time. However, because he was so popular amongst his students, Hideto stayed working as a teacher longer than he usually would. Coincidentally, Hideto and Rie met one day at a badminton club. She was her amazing, positive, joyful self and Hideto mirrored similar qualities. So naturally, over the course of 2004, the two grew very fond of each other and soon became a couple. In the beginning, their relationship seemed perfect. Hideto was positive, funny, and showed Rie all the characteristics she was looking for in a man. However, as the months passed, his behavior was beginning to change. He was no longer the fun-loving, positive man she had once met. Hideto had become moody, angry, and extremely negative. And something which Rie didn't know was that Hideto suffered from severe depression. Very similar to Jekyll and Hyde, in public and in front of people, he would act all happy. But behind closed doors, he was extremely toxic. Rie tried her best to uplift him and help him as much as she could with his problems. But she quickly realized that there was no helping this man. Her advice and encouragement would constantly fall on deaf ears and Hideto would even reject the help of doctors. So by the time 2006 rolled around, Rie couldn't take it anymore and she broke up with Hideto. This did not sit too well with him as he refused to end the relationship. For the first time in his life, he found someone who he hadn't been bored of. So in the beginning, he tried his best to win her back. However, Rie wasn't having it. During their two-year relationship, she had given Hideto plenty of chances to change and she knew this time wasn't gonna be any different. Rie just wanted to move on with her life, but Hideto was not gonna allow that. He would constantly call her, send her messages and emails. The more she ignored him, the more aggressive and disturbing those messages got. Saying things like, I won't allow you to be happy without me. He began to gaslight her, expressing his depression and problems were all her fault. And then Hideto threatened to end himself if she didn't get back with him. He followed true with those threats after going to a park one day, getting heavily intoxicated and attempting to OD. However, his plans failed and he was still alive. By now, Rie was severely scared for her life as Hideto had proved to be far more dangerous than she had expected. So she took action by going to the police and reporting everything he'd been doing. The Japanese police gave Hideto a formal warning, instructing him to stop all contact with Rie. And surprisingly, he abided by it for just a bit. He stopped calling, he stopped the emails, and he stopped messaging her. However, Rie was so shook because of Hideto's behavior that she never wanted to be accessible to him again. 
So she seeked help from an organization that specialized in these type of stalking situations. And they suggested that Rie should change her email and phone number, get a new job and move somewhere very far. What she was doing here was pretty much erasing herself from existence and starting new. As the time passed and Rie transitioned to her new life, she met another man and created a very healthy relationship with him. And in 2008, the happy couple got married. She took on her husband's surname Miyoshi and the two moved to another city in Japan called Zushi. It seemed that Rie's dark past was behind her and she had finally gotten rid of her crazy ex for good. However, Hideto had never forgotten about her and he still hadn't moved on. He would once again begin to send her hundreds of emails a day. In those emails, he would write, I am definitely gonna kill you. Hideto would also persistently search for her online and call her place of work and even go to her old home in hopes of finding her, but was unsuccessful. Her previous workplace didn't know where she had gone and her old home was now occupied by a new family. Some time had gone by and it was now 2010. Hideto's mental health had plunged to extreme lows, so he took a trip up Mount Tanigawa and attempted to get rid of himself once again. The story would have ended there if it wasn't for a group of hikers who found him and rescued him. After being airlifted and treated at the hospital close by, they sent Hideto to a mental institution for a short time. The police had gone ahead and told Hideto's family about their son's dark history of stalking and aggressive threats. However, that didn't seem to do anything as when he was released, he went back to live with his mom and the emails continued even more. Meanwhile, Rie wanted to make some extra money because the cost of living in Zushi had gone up. So she decided to create a new Facebook account to reconnect with old clients, but made the mistake of using her previous name, Rie Shibata, thinking surely Hideto was still not searching for her after all this time. But unfortunately, this was the beginning of the end because Hideto had never stopped searching. Only a couple of days had gone by until Hideto found Rie's new account and much to his shock, he saw her relationship status as married. He was disgusted by what he saw. His ex-girlfriend was finally happy and had fully moved on with someone else and here he was, still thinking about her obsessively. He quickly noted down all of her contact information from her Facebook and began sending her a barrage of disturbing messages, saying, I will kill you and your husband. Rie and her husband contacted the police and Hideto was arrested and charged with suspicions of intimidation, giving him a sentence of one year in prison and three years of probation. Now this is where things go really bad. Because during the court hearing, the officer made the grave mistake of reading out Rie's new surname, Miyoshi, and her partial address. Hideto paid close attention to those details, realizing she now lived in Zushi. So while being locked up for an entire year in prison, the only thing that went through his head was plotting his revenge. A year had gone by and Hideto was now free under the terms that he was not allowed to contact Rie ever again. But the very first thing Hideto did was scour the internet, looking for clues and information. He spent months on end asking over 400 questions from online forums. Things like, How do I find out more about a person by their phone number? And also inquiring about a small temple festival that happened only once a year on October 13th. This was a temple that Rie was notorious for going to. So when he found the location of that temple, he figured Rie was living close by. And by now, he had once again begun to send Rie emails, roughly around 1,000 in the span of a month from March to April 2012, most of which surrounded the same topic. You promised to marry me, but instead, you went and married another man. I demand compensation. Rie again contacted the police, but due to the nature of the emails being non-threatening, they couldn't lock Hideto up because according to them, he was only asking for compensation and that wasn't illegal. So instead they set up surveillance cameras and placed police patrols around her perimeter. Over 146 patrols went down in the span of a few months until October. And by then, the messages had stopped. Hideto decided to lay low in order to bring down Rie's defenses. Because of this, 
police stopped the patrols and uninstalled the cameras. However, behind the scenes, Hideto was still actively searching for her and was now reaching out to private investigators to help him find Rie. Hideto would bring up a false motive that he was trying to locate his savior, the person who helped him go from a depressing life to now living a good life. This request seemed rather sketchy to the private investigators and as they did a little research on Hideto, they found out that he wasn't the type of guy that they should be helping. So he got rejected. However, there was one private investigator who ended up taking the job and got him the information within just 24 hours. And to make matters worse, he obtained that information illegally by calling the government tax department and pretending to be Rie's husband. Unfortunately, the staff who gave him those details failed to realize that Rie had applied for tight restrictions around her personal information. And so now, Hideto had all that he needed. He knew her address and knew exactly where she lived. After all those years of pent-up aggression just boiling, he was finally gonna get what he'd been waiting for. On November 6, 2012, on his very own 40th birthday, Hideto decided to treat himself to the best birthday present by paying Rie a visit at her place. He arrived disguised as a delivery man with a cardboard box. Inside of it, a rope and a knife. Hideto knew if he showed up at the front door, Rie would never let him in. So he decided to check around the house for an unlocked window. He snuck himself inside her home and much to his pleasure, he spotted Rie all alone. He grabbed her and began to stab Rie countless times. As she fell to the floor, Hideto could do nothing more than watch and enjoy, knowing his plans had finally come into fruition. He then took the rope and set it up on the balcony railing and essentially ended things for himself. All this time his plan was, if he couldn't have Rie, no one could. It was now past 3pm and a pedestrian walking by spotted Hideto's body, so he called the cops. Shortly after, police arrived and found Rie. They ran her name through their system and it became evidently clear what had just transpired. Thanks to the negligence of the police and government, this stalker had finally completed his mission. Rie's husband Mr. Miyoshi had strong suspicions that this exact thing could happen, so he was furious at law enforcement. After all, the couple did everything right on their part. If Japanese authorities had taken this case more seriously, this incident could have easily been avoided. Mr. Miyoshi ended up suing the Zushi government for 11 million yen, equivalent to $90,000. However, he was only rewarded 1.1 million yen, which was just $10,000 instead. The private investigator involved in this murder was sentenced to two and a half years in prison, and the officer who read Rie's name and her address in court to Hideto was reprimanded. Subsequently, due to the severity of this case and the outrage that ensued after, major legal changes were made to Japan's anti-stalking laws in order to strengthen it furthermore and to protect the victims better. 